Hello crafty friends, welcome to today's video. In front of me I have got two card experiments that I did earlier in the week and I'll talk you through how I made these and then we'll make another card along the same lines. Before we get into that though, I want to give you a heads up about a Facebook group that I've just created. It's for anyone who wants to share their love of card making and to seek inspiration or help or just to hang out with other like-minded card making individuals. It's not just for clean and simple cards, all cards are welcome. If you're interested in joining that Facebook group then check out the description of this video where there will be a link. And that's the advertising done for today. Now on to these cards. This was the first one that I made. And the first thing I did with this was I used this embossing folder, which is broken, but it's got, it's, it's a sort of double patterned one, but I used this pattern, just the flowers, uh, to emboss the back panel. Then I took my pouch of pretty backgrounds that hadn't made their way onto a car jet and I die cut some flower shapes from them. I also die cut the same shapes from gold glitter cardstock. And I stuck these on the background here, overlapping them. And then I added another panel on some craft foam on top. And I used a craft knife just to cut that before I stuck it on to give it a interesting edge. And then obviously I've added a sentiment and some Gold Nouveau drops. So that was my first go at this card idea. This one I did in much the same way, but I used different dies. So I'll show you how I cut this. Very straightforward, you just need a craft knife. Uh, but if you've got dies that cut this shape, obviously you can use those. But just use a sharp craft knife and you might want to just practice the movement a bit with your arm just to get that muscle memory going. And the trick is to move from the sort of elbow and shoulder rather than the wrist and then you'll get a nice smooth line. So I just started here and cut a swoop and you can, you know, cut any shape you like really. So that's how I did the original. But if you don't fancy that or you want a different design, there are other things you can do for the top panel. For this one, I used a Stampin' Up Punch. This was from a charity shop. I don't know if it's still available, but I just punched down the sides there and that would obviously sit on there like that. And you could have bits poking out from underneath. So border punch. I've also got some of these border dies. I think they are creative expressions. And again, just use those, run them through your die cutting machine. You could do a straight edge like that, or you could put them at an angle for something a little bit different. So that's a large scallop on that one. And this one, almost tooth-like. Again, I put that at a, an angle rather than straight up and down. So you, you get a bit of variation along the side. And for this one, I use my torn edge ruler which is a great little tool if you want to tear something in a predictable way. So you just place it along there, press it down as you tear and you get a nice tear like that. And for this one, I used my guillotine and I just took my panel, sliced a bit off there, turned it so that this slice was at right angles, sliced it, and then you've got a sort of a rectangle or square coming in and you can stick things under there. So there's lots of different ways of creating that edge and as well as lots of different ways of creating an edge there's lots of different things you can sandwich in between your two layers. You've got shapes, basic shapes, circles, squares, rectangles, hexagons, you could do butterflies, you could do leaves, you could do tags, you could do tabs, you could do uh, cameras, you could have little frames, little Polaroid frames sticking out. What I'm going to do today is tickets because I have lots and lots of ticket dies that I've been collecting over the years. No idea 
where they're from because I don't keep my dies and stamps organised by manufacturer. I tend to throw away the packaging uh, or use it as a shims in my die cutting. So I keep the packaging for that rather than just throw it straight in the recycling. And then I put all my like dies together. So I have a magnetic sheet that I stick dies on and I put all my tickets together. So there's probably about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe seven, six or seven different brands here, which is not helpful for you if you want to know where they've come from, but that's just the way my brain works. I like to have all my similar type dies and all my similar type stamps together. So as I say, today I'm gonna to do tickets and I think this would be a great card for giving to someone who's going off on some kind of adventure, a gap year or something, somewhere where they might need a ticket. To colour my tickets, I am going to do some mixed media on this De La Rowney mixed media paper. And I've chosen three Distress Oxides in a kind of mappy colour scheme, I think. The kind of colours you might see on a map. So we've got Bundled Sage, Broken China and Salvaged Patina and I'm going to smush to start with. If you want to know how to make a smusher there is a video linked above and down below. Very easy, very cheap, very effective. So we'll start by smushing on the Salvaged Patina which is a lovely light tealy turquoise. I don't want all my tickets to look the same because I want them to kind of stand off from each other a bit. So I think I'll stick with my salvage patina on this side. And then we'll get the broken china, which is a bit darker. Add the water. Overlap it a bit. And then we'll bring in the bundled sage. You can smush with any water-based inks. So you can use your Catherine Pooler inks or your Gina K inks or whatever inks you've got. So you don't need to rush out and buy Distress Oxides. With Distress Oxides, they do have a bit of opacity to them, so the layering looks a bit different to if you did them with just regular dye inks, but use what you've got. I'm going to dry that with my hairdryer. So I've got this teeny tiny chevron stencil. I'm going to use this to add some chevrons so they look a bit like arrows. They could also, I guess, look a bit like trees. So they've got that outdoorsy, travel-y feel. Um, and I think I shall just use the broken china for this. Not going to cover the whole thing, just here and there, so that some of the tickets that I cut have some chevrons on them. So I shall place my dies on. Actually, I'm going to cut this in half so I've got two pieces that are small enough to go through my cuttle bug. To create some texture on my background, I'm going to use this embossing folder because it reminds me a bit of, I guess, grid lines on a map. So there is my embossed background, but for the top part, for this one, I want to use my torn edge. I think that would look nice with the tickets, the kind of splotchy look, and have a bit of an angle. So I'm going to tear that off there like that and that is going to sit on top of there and I'm going to mount it on some craft foam so 
So I've put craft foam all around the edge, but I haven't gone too close to this edge because I want to tuck my tickets underneath that. So I'll pop that on there and make sure all the edges line up nicely. And then we'll bring in the tickets. I know I've got far more than I need, but um, they'll be useful for other projects. So we've got some lighter ones and some darker ones. Right, I think I shall stick some of these down with glue because this is so lumpy and bumpy that I think glue is probably going to be the best thing. Before I go any further, I'm going to actually put this on a card blank because I just want to get a feel for the whole card to see what needs to do in next. So I'm going to use my ATG, add my tape runner. Stick it in this corner of this bit of linen textured cardstock. sentiment I'm going to stamp the word adventure on a piece of linen textured cardstock and cut that out I'm going to use this stitched banner die So I was toying with the idea of adding some little alphas that said a new, so that the sentiment would be a new adventure. But I don't think I will. I think adventure on its own is absolutely fine because you can put, you know, obviously put a, a longer message inside the card. I popped that down with tape runner, squared it up with my T-square ruler and added a little bit of foam there so it's not too floppy. And for finishing touches, I'm going to add some green, bluey green enamel dots that match these colours really well. Just a little smattering on this side so that it brings, brings the colour over a little bit. So there you go. Same design idea with the embossed background, something lined up here, tucked in under Neath a raised portion, sentiment over the top, some finishing touches added like gold nouveau drops or enamel dots and there you have it, you could do pretty much anything with this card design I think. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, if you have please do leave a thumbs up, don't forget to come over to the Facebook group for more card making fun and I hope to see you back here very soon, thanks for watching, bye for now.